Shiati Tagak and his son Stephen are on their way to the flow edge. It's where the ice ends and the ocean begins. A place that teems with wildlife. Today, they're looking for narwhal. The whales swim by here every year, moving into nearby fjords for the summer months. Shiati has been part of the annual narwhal hunt since he was a boy. He says, I started joining my father for the whale hunt when I was about nine or 10, and I started hunting them myself when I was 14. The Mitti Matalik Hunters and Trappers Association oversees the hunt in Pond Inlet. Hunters have to pick up permits from Jacob Aniviapik. He says the hunt continues to be an important part of Inuit life. He says whale hunting is very important to the people of Pond Inlet. It is crucial to them. In the past, it was their only means of survival. Now it's used for food and it has commercial benefits because the tusks can be sold to the co-op for $150 a foot. That can mean big money for someone whose only income is through hunting. But there are limits set on how many narwhal can be hunted each year. He says, the government has strict rules on how many whales and polar bears can be hunted. However, we are free to harvest as many walruses and seals as we need. For the last 40 years, the federal government has decided how many narwhal each community in Nunavut can harvest. But three years ago, five communities had a chance to do something that they haven't done since before the government arrived manage their own narwhal hunt. The Nunavut Wildlife Management Board came up with the idea and it hopes that this test will prove that Inuit are capable of community management. Hunters themselves in the past have sort of cried out, you know, to us and said, you know, we should look after our own uh, management. Now the land claim uh, really directed us to do that. Historically, that's how the annual harvest was conducted. And once again, communities are setting their own limits. The government quota in Pond Inlet was 100. Under community management, it has been 150. He says, we know what we are doing. We only shoot what we are supposed to shoot. But sometimes we do break the rules a bit. The transition from a quota system to community management went relatively smoothly, but there were exceptions. They were restricted, and then all of a sudden, it's almost like a dog, I guess, when you had a dog leased on a lease for 20 years and you let it go, it runs wild, right? So it would run wild. So it kind of, it kind of went that way in some communities, but, but it was c controlled reasonably well. Some communities handled the challenge themselves by putting their own quota in place. But others had their hunts shut down early by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. It was only the once in 2000 where DFO instituted a closure at Kikitarjuak. There were reports of a large number of landed narwhal as well as a large number of wounded and escaped and sunk and lost. This was considered a significant increase. It was considered a conservation concern and was also considered immediate in nature. And there was a, an immediate closure. Hunters say they can cut down on the number of narwhals hunted, but making sure every animal is retrieved after it's shot isn't as easy. even the best laid plans can fail. Shiati couldn't get his boat into the water quickly enough to get this whale 
before it sank. He says, hunters never waste whales on purpose. Hunters here in the Arctic aren't negligent. Sometimes it's unavoidable to lose an animal. It happens all the time, but not on purpose. If it was on purpose, Jacob Anaviafik says the hunter would be held accountable. He says conservation-minded hunting has always been a part of Inuit life. It has always been the Inuit tradition not to overhunt. It's the Inuit way of survival. Conservation of whales has always been taken into account by Inuit, and if a hunter disrespects the hunting rules, he will be confronted and will be required to go before a committee. He can even have his whaling rights removed. Nunavut's hunting organizations feel they've done all they can to make community management a success. But the government is still concerned about the number of whales being struck and lost and those that are injured and managed to escape. And that's sure to be a sticking point as the three years of community management is reviewed. Narwhal are a finite resource. There is a finite number of narwhal. And I believe that the population of Nunavut is increasing at a higher rate than the population of narwhal. And you can't have your hunting mortality increasing at the same rate because the narwhal just aren't being born as fast. So therein lies the problem. There has to be some restrictions made. Where that restriction comes from, we like to make the, that decision together. But there needs to be some kind of restriction. But more information needs to be collected before any decision can be made. Right now, no one really knows how many narwhal there are in the high Arctic. The last aerial survey and count was done more than 20 years ago. We will have a better idea of what a sustainable hunt might be. Um, when there may be a conservation concern, it will give us more information to make those kinds of decisions. In the meantime, local hunters and their organizations hope the federal government will continue allowing community management and trust them to do it responsibly. It's a dream, I think, that I have and everybody else that knows about management is that this would have worked, if this would have worked beautifully, we would have probably considered it to transferring the community-based management to another, to another species. You know, like polar bears for that matter, you know, that's, that's, that's a dream and it's still possible to get into those kind of things. Now Shiati Tagak and the other hunters here will have to wait for a decision. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans will collect the data, crunch the numbers, and then make a recommendation. One that ensures the longevity of narwhal in the territory, but also meets the cultural and economic needs of Inuit. And if this three-year experiment is deemed a success, perhaps the government will start putting more control back into the hands of the people. In Pond Inlet, I'm David Giroux.